Are restaurant owners working class? Are property developers in charge of £13 million developments working class? It might seem like a silly question. You might think, no, obviously these, these, these people are not. There is no there is no rundown of the different classes that includes restaurant owners and property developers in the section called working class. But the Guardian's North of England editor disagrees. Um, this became apparent when sort of people online really uh, did a bit of digging into an article that was published this week in The Guardian. Let's take a look at this. Imagine the state we'd be in if Corbyn had been in charge. The view from the red wall. Working class voters in Lee do not regret voting for Tories after listening to Chancellor's summer statement. Um, so it's sort of classic Guardian Corbyn bashing um, piece. Um, uh, but the question one has to ask after we, you know, what's this based on? Has a, has a poll been done? Is there a survey? No, there are four people cited in the article. Um, two are retired. One was still at school um, and the only one currently working owned an artisan pizzeria. So this is the Guardian's image of, of the working class here. So let's, let's go to a couple of quotes from the article. Um, so this, is our first, this is character one. In Lee Town Centre on Wednesday afternoon, Andrew Twentyman was on the phone sourcing Nuja sausage for his artisanal pizza parlour, recently reopened at under 50% capacity. A first-time Tory voter in December's general election, Sunak's hospitality package made him feel massively vindicated for switching his vote from Labour. Can you imagine what state we'd be in if Jeremy Corbyn had been in charge of all this, he asked. Well, I mean, can you imagine? Probably the the government would have listened to to the trade unions and we would have they would have stopped forcing people to go into work earlier. They probably would have, you know, stopped people going onto full public transport buses and, and trains and we would have had less bus drivers passing away. I mean, I think probably it, it could have been a lot better if Jeremy Corbyn was in charge. But anyway, we'll listen to this guy who who makes Nuja pizzas um let's go to the the other couple um who are in this so we're missing out the the school girl and we're going to keith and jacqueline park um so this is a section about keith park um he recently retired from the nhs where he worked for years as an infectious disease nurse he felt able to vote tory only after burying his dad he'd kill me and he said his, he was primarily motivated by a desire to cut immigration in a borough that is 97% white. Whole sections of Lee that are colonised with new entrants, he said in March, claiming that when he used to do contact tracing for TB, almost all the new infections came from asylum seekers from Africa and the Middle East. Um, now, there are two obvious issues here looking at those two quotes. Which is one, is it OK to quote that claim about TB without a fact check? Obviously, there's a lot of dog whistles going on there. Um, but also, why are these taken as representatives of working class voters? None of them have working class jobs. It's only for people. Can you really say the Lee working class um, are really glad um, they voted against Jeremy Corbyn because of these four interviews? Um, the fact that this sensationalist conclusion was drawn from such a small sample looks even worse um, when you look at Pid's previous piece on Lee's working class. Now, let's pick up this, this piece from a month ago where she interviewed again for Lee resident. Two of the four, pizza shop owner Andrew Twentyman and retired nurse Keith Park. So the Guardian just keep going back to this town, interviewing the same people and, and saying this is what the, you know, the, the authentic working class of Lee think. You might think if you're only going to get four people, at least make sure that you, you find them in a sort of robust way. Maybe you get a polling company in, someone who, who puts together focus groups so you can pick people who are particularly representative of the different communities in the area. That doesn't seem to be what happened. Let's bring up this tweet, which people found on, on Twitter from Helen Pidd. I just ate an excellent pizza in Lee and you should too. Twentyman's, the place is called. Um, so this is the North of England editor who's written a piece about what people in Lee think. She's going to the same two people for every article. And it's just someone who she bought pizza from. So you, you often get this thing in, in, in when you're watching commentators speak on, on television where most of their opinions from ordinary people are from cabbies. And the reason this is, is because the only time these people meet ordinary people is when they're getting a cab from their home to the TV studio. Politicians do the same thing. Now what we get is Guardian journalists who get all of their opinions from restaurant owners when they get artisan pizzas. And now they claim that's the voice of the constituency. Um, guys, what do you make of this? Aaron, I know you've been incensed about this particular story today. You know, we talk about client journalism in this country, but, you know, I never thought client journalism would mean that you would write 
uh, a guy into two of your stories from one town just because he gave you a free quattro stagione pizza. You know, that's not what I think of with client journalism. You know, you can be a little bit more ambitious with that, I think, Helen. You know, you're a northern editor at The Guardian. It's a big publication after all. Uh, by the way, if you go on Instagram, tw uh, 20 man, I think, 20 man pizza XX, the pizzas look horrendous. They're all burnt. <laughs> They're all burnt. The base is a different size. So I'm thinking, this guy's a baker. My God. They're putting on like, he's just throwing ingredients on it. It's not, it's not a pizza. <laughs> This is, I always forget, Aaron, that you're half Italian and then you show, you know, a shoddy pizza with some, you know, off brand no. toppings and suddenly this comes out, you know? No, it looks like somebody has pissed in a sponge and they've put, and they've put sriracha sauce on top. They've covered it in sriracha sauce. That's what it looks, that's what it looks like. It's this thick and it's covered in a sort of red sauce. Anyway, and I, I'm thinking, like you say, is it a send up? Because he's, you know, he's from, it's called, it's, it's pronounced Undoya, by the way, Michael. Um, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a kind of Undoya. Undoya. Oh. So it's oh. a bit like um, a meat, a sausage spread, and it's delicious. Mm. Uh, delicious. <laughs> um, it's delicious. You think, you think, is this, it's like, is this a send up? Is she trying, is she taking the mickey out of herself? And then you've got this other guy saying about 97%, 97% Lee, it's 97% white rather. And, um, <laughs> We've got a problem with migrants and they're spreading all these diseases. You think he's saying illegal immigrants from Africa. What con what countries? Right? And uh, how do you know they're illegal immigrants? I mean, I just I find it remarkable that a liberal journalist would just take all this crap at face value and you say, Well, this is what they're saying. Yeah, maybe they're wrong. You you know, you have a you have a you have obviously to report what people are saying, you also have a responsibility as a journalist to aspire to the truth, right? It's not like it's not like you can interview somebody, oh, what do people in Lee say about climate change? Oh, well, you know, Mr. John X says that it's actually a fabricated lie by a London-based elite paedophile ring. Would you write that? No, because it's fucking stupid. It's mad. <laughs> and this is and this is mad too, Helen. So, I mean, it was one of the worst pieces of reports from journalism I've ever seen in my life. And it, it is concerning. I'll just finish with this. Helen Bidd is so obsessed with Jeremy Corbyn. She dressed up as him at a Halloween party. She dressed up as Jeremy Corbyn with big black eyes around. And I think, I'm not interested in your strange vendetta, right? I want you to tell me what people in Lee think about this scheme. People on Universal Credit in Lee have gone up 65% since the since this crisis began. Go talk to them. Go talk to the people who are actually furloughed staff rather than the restaurant owner who now doesn't have to pay them for the duration of the crisis. That would make, you want to work with those people, go talk to the staff, not to the boss. I mean, it really tells you there's something deeply wrong at a political level with senior people at The Guardian. If this is permissible, if this is normal, you know, I don't think this is just a one-off. I think there's a, there's a significant problem of political culture amongst the liberal uh, political kind of class in this country. It's not that big, but it, you know, it, it's very powerful. It's far more influential and has a far more prominent profile than the socialist left. Uh, uh, if your instinct is to interview the boss rather than the employees when you're talking about working class people, there's a big problem there. Mm. And also, I mean, this is, I mean, this might seem a little bit petty, but it is funny. People <laughs> looked up reviews for this, this particular um, restaurant and it doesn't seem like Andrew Twenty, but he's a working class hero. Let's, let's get one of them up. So someone puts in there, one of the best pizzas I've ever had. So they think it's good, even though you think it looks shit, Aaron, but a little on the expensive side for Lee, but worth a visit, four stars. And now this is how Twentyman responds. Lewis, you get what you pay for. <laughs> you have just reduced our average rating because you have an opinion about us being expensive. You didn't calculate in the cost involved oh in God. renovating the premises, quality of service, our pizzas, which you can dine in and eat, use only the finest Italian ingredients, not from concentrates or powders and cooked in a traditional wood-fired pizza oven far cheaper than Domino's <laughs> and only a fraction dearer than other takeaways. Um... You can, you can you can see why this this guy doesn't sound like he was going to vote for Jeremy Corbyn. Like whatever the guy um, had to say about anything. Another reviewer, um, Dan Reynolds, gave the restaurants a three star review a year ago. To which Andrew replied, "Dan, is this review because you didn't get a chef job, or because I didn't ask for your lamb terrine recipe that best your previous employer also rejected?" Oh this my negative god! Negative attitude towards your work and now as a small family run business is the reason. I couldn't employ <laughs> three stars. Oh my god! <laughs> so this is Keir Starmer, Andrew Twentyman. This is the man whose vote you need. 
Um, we need to be scapegoating people who give four stars at restaurants just because it's slightly pricey. I think that's the that's the dividing line that we need in this party between the people and well the everyone else, I suppose, the bastards who, who give you four stars if if you overcharge. So another thing um, people discovered about this this fella, this person who Helen Pitts put forward as sort of like the working class voice tribune even of Lee. Um, his his brother, we can get this up from the Lee Journal. Um, is a property developer in charge of a 13 million um, redevelopment in the center of town. And in response to this, so Helen Pidd reads all of this sort of you know, dismantling of the article, and this is what she says. Let's get this up. For those alleged Labour supporters who have been trying to get ex-Labour voters in this story cancelled, shame on you. Why not try to understand why Lee went Tory and what it will take to win these folk back instead of piling on? Um, the obvious question there is who was getting cancelled? I mean, they're just looking up reviews of the pizza. No, one, no one's writing to anyone's boss. This guy is his boss. Um, you can't get the pensioners cancelled because they're, they're, they're retired. But anyway, I don't think anyone was trying to get anyone cancelled. Uh, this follow-up was what really got people going, though. Um, from Helen Pidd, Northern editor at The Guardian. You can be working class and run a restaurant or indeed be a property developer. <laughs> Ask Andrew Twentyman how much money he makes from the pizzeria. The minimum wage. The Guardian interviews universal credit claimants all the time. I'm sure I will do so in Lee before too long. I mean, you've been writing pieces about what Lee thinks for months now. <laughs> Maybe you should have found someone who didn't own a pizza shop or was retired who was at school before you started writing articles about what the working class of Lee think. Um, the other thing is that every business owner tells you they're on the minimum. This is how people do their tax returns. It's like, this is the, the other thing of how, like how out of touch these people are. Everyone knows that, that self-employed people always tell you they don't earn much money. That's how they do that. That's how you add up the sum. It's not quite tax avoid. It's like, you know, but everyone knows it apart from Helen Pidd, more than <laughs> the Guardian. Aaron, you look desperate to be. I have many feelings about this. Like one, the trying to get people cancelled. I loved it. It was just like nine, nine, nine. I'd like to report an attempt at cancellation. Like it, it's completely meaningless. But two is that it does speak to the completely ass backwards way we conceive of class in this country, which is completely abstracted from and distinct from discussions of wealth. And that's why we can have these kind of you know, strange kind of, uh, you know, cultural hang-ups about what does and what doesn't constitute uh, a middle-class identity. So even though this guy is like running an artisanal pizza parlor and he's, you know, spreading, well, how do I, how do I pronounce it? Induha. 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 Okay. Hmm. I have mangled that. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> But, you know, even though these are like traditional signifiers of bougie because he's got a regional accent and reactionary politics, it must mean he is authentic, sort of the earth, working class. However, if you're a delivery rider and you're earning less than minimum wage and you're in debt, and you can't pay your rent. Uh, but, you know, God help you. You live in Hackney. Um, sorry, middle class. Uh, elitist, metropolitan, out of touch. Um, you know, all these signifiers, they're both completely vapid, but they're also malleable, right? They can be attached to other things to serve particular political purposes. And I don't think that it's an accident. And I don't purely think it's, you know, it's, it's not just the result of media idiocy, that we have an idea of working class in this country, which is essentially small business owner, Right. He's you know, likely on, you know, 50, 60 K a year. Right. That's that's what we think of as working class in this country. And that's all about uh, how you position yourself vis-a-vis -vis socially progressive politics. And it's a it's a really good um, it's ideologically useful for the right to go. This is the authentic working class or the southern lot or elitist. It means that you can use the language of of um minoritarian grievance to articulate dominant political interests so you can say these are the people who are the real left behind and they're not they're homeowners they're comfortable the pensioners uh you know the small business owners uh, whereas the working age working class the majority of the working age working class um are sort of castigated and dismissed and they have their political interests dismissed you know their voting behavior dismissed because, oh, you know, you're just middle-class lovies. And the irony, of course, is that this is all being written up by middle-class journalists. 
Um, so it's not just idiocy. It's not an accident. Um, it serves an uh, ideological purpose. I just want to say, you've, you've said Helen Pitt is middle class, but she might dispute that because as someone whose definition of working class seems to be has some reactionary opinions and a northern accent, um, I've, she does have a northern accent and it seems she has some reactionary opinions. <laughs> Let's get to Twitter <laughs> from 2015. Um, a dismaying number of voters I met in Oldham today can't speak English despite living there a decade or more, but they're voting Labour. <laughs> How does she know they've lived there a decade or more if they can't speak English? How does she know they're voting Labour? Yeah. A I mean, decade also, or more. Good she, point. He's, 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 I'm going to tell you my life story. Oh, yeah, you guys, what the fuck? That doesn't add up, Helen. But also, you know, you know what this stuff is. You know what this stuff is, right? There's dogs are barking in the background. It's this idea that Labour scams votes from immigrants who, you know, perhaps even participate in postal voter fraud, which is the whole rumour mill which went into overdrive after the Peterborough by-election result, right? There's classic dog whistle stuff, and it's about discrediting the political participation of people of colour. And it also, I'm sorry, like half the time when someone goes, oh, yeah, that person doesn't speak English, it just means that they have an accent. A lot of the time, right, when someone says don't speak English, it just means I hear an accent and it makes it difficult for me to hear and understand this person because every time I hear an accent, I just think, well, you're, you're half a human being, aren't you? Um, and, and one of the reasons why I bring this up and I'm so incensed is, do you remember when I was working at that pub when I first knew you two? Mm -hmm. mm. And sometimes we'd have Navarra meetings and I'd sneak you all free Peroni. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I miss those days. Yeah, I mean, listen, you've got to get me back working at the Bluey. Um, but I remember one night I was working at the pub and someone put a complaint in to my manager about the quality of my spoken English. They said, how dare you hire this, this barmaid who can't speak English? And I was just like, listen, you prick, I'm doing an English degree. Um, but, but again, it's about how people react to signifiers of racial and cultural otherness. Because that, that tweet doesn't make sense. How do you know they lived there a decade? How do you know that they're voting Labour if they don't speak English? Probably means that they have an accent. Maybe they're evasive and not as forthcoming as you would like because they don't want to talk to you. They're capable of speaking English. They just don't really want to talk to you. They don't want to talk to Karen Pidd. All right, <laughs> sorry. Also, can I just say, can I just say, can I just say one more thing um, in, in regard to all of this? Ash has already sort of touched upon it. A majority of the working age population voted Labour in the last general election. A majority of renters voted Labour at the last general election. What does working class mean for these people? Working class is anybody who isn't a, a trade unionist, who isn't a renter, who isn't under 40, who has a university degree, who's from a minority background, or who potentially has a left-wing opinion, right? So basically you have about sort of 70% of the country is excluded from being uh, working class. I mean, it's just it's radicalized it's, homeowners. Radicalized homeowners are the real working class. Yeah. The left behind, the people who've paid off their five hundred thousand pound mortgages. How will they survive with this half a million pound asset? Come on, how will they get by? These poor people, downtrodden by the political class for too long. And the thing is, a lot of these same people actually think that they're downtrodden. They honestly think they're the victims.